Stabbing, beheading, incest, and dwarves. No, I'm not talking about the WhatCulture.com Christmas office party, but Game of Thrones. The series of books written by aging man Barrel George R. R. Martin is immensely popular, with the TV series making slaves of us every year. As the show now advances beyond the points in the books, it's got a lot of dedicated fans speculating as to how it's all gonna end. Spoiler alert, heart attack. Oh, you mean the series? Not a clue, but we've collected a few of our favourite guesses here to stir the pot. With that in mind, I'm Jules from WhatCulture.com, and here are nine fan theories on how it's going to end. Number 9. X will sit atop the Iron Throne Since the series began, the very impractical Throne of Swords has been a big focal point for the warring factions, all of which looking to plant their posterior on the pointy pedestal. The question of just who will ultimately claim the Iron Throne has been poured over again and again by fans. Is it eventually going to be Jon, or Daenerys, or Sansa, or somebody else ruling Westeros in the end? My money's on that fat baker boy from Season 1. There's a feeling that this is still the point of the series, it's called Game of Thrones after all, and will only end once the rightful ruler is sitting on the most uncomfortable chair imaginable, surrounded by burning bodies and a land in tatters, wondering if this numb ass is all worth the bother. Number 8. The Kingdoms Will Be Truly Divided Rather than one king or queen ruling Westeros from the base of King's Landing, perhaps what is truly needed in order to restore peace and prosperity to the land is for some proper devolution of power. Are you listening, David Cameron? No, probably not. This fits in with the Great Northern Conspiracy, which states that Robb Stark left a will in which he legitimises Jon Snow and names him the heir to Winterfell and the North. A group of Northern Lords are well aware of this and are working together in order to see the plan come to fruition, with Jon becoming the King of the North and holding an alliance with the South as uneasy as the atmosphere at a dinner table when your little brother asks you about yiffing. Number 7. The Song Has Already Been Sung The entire series that the show is based on is called A Song of Fire and Ice. As evidenced throughout the books and series, songs are sung of great heroes and major historical events, such as the Dance of Dragons or the massive shit that the mountain took last night. Eventually, the events unfolding now will become the stuff of legend, and singers will sing of them, old Nan-type figures will tell children the tale of Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen, and that is what the show is. Of course, the Song of Ice and Fire does already exist, which may counter this idea somewhat. It's actually referenced to Danny in the House of Undying, although no one actually knows the contents of it. It was said to be the song of the prince that was promised, but given that person may be the one that saves Westeros in the end, it could be a fitting eulogy to the end of the saga. The Song of Ice and Fire thus details the events building up to the arrival of the prince, and the subsequent salvation of the world. It's already happened long ago, and now is the stuff of Westeros legend, in much the same way that the Stark kids hear the tale of Bran the Builder and the like. Cue the end scene. A group of kids gathering around an old lady begging for her to tell it again, but this time with more Hodor. Number 6. Everyone Kills Each Other Game of Thrones is an extremely bloody and violent show, with hardly a week passing by without somebody dying. If you get close to a character, then chances are they're going to be kicking the bucket brown bread or just plain croaked. So following that line of thinking, what's the most logical way for the series to end? In a complete and utter bloodbath not seen since my graduation ball. By the end of the series, there's going to be no one left. Never mind the political allegiances or somebody on the Iron Throne, all of the major players are going to be dead by the end of things. Jamie will kill Cersei, Jon will die again because he bloody loves it, and Daenerys will probably die ironically by slipping on an ice cube. There'll still be the kids and smaller houses left to rebuild for the future, but all of the significant characters will be gone. Number 5. Azor Ahai is Reborn Winter is coming. Not literally, as it's warmer than ball soup here in the UK at the moment. Thankfully, there's a prophesied saviour who will come to defeat the enemy from the far north. Azor Ahai will be reborn of smoke and salt, wielding the sword Lightbringer, and he or she will save the realm. Azor Ahai was a legendary warrior who made Lightbringer by forging steel for 100 days. Not sure if that means he was crap at his job or not. And then driving it into the heart of his beloved wife, Nisa Nisa, which was not <laughs> a Nisa Nisa thing to do. <laughs> this enabled him to defeat the darkness that lay over the world. It's unknown whether or not he and the prince that were promised are one and the same, but it's generally Azor who is mentioned more. Popular theories as to who it might be include Daenerys or Jon Snow or that fat baker boy I was talking to you about earlier. Whoever the figure, the main theory is, is that Ahai will bring forth Lightbringer and fulfill the prophecy, saving Westeros from the others. Very epic, very vague. Number 4. Bran Saves the Seven Kingdoms <sighs> Oh Bran, much like the serial of the same name, you're a regular bore to me, but other people seem to love your non-walking magic nose, so I guess you're a legitimate contender. He may not be able to walk, but from his time in the tree base, Bran has now got a fair amount of guidance from the Three-Eyed Raven on the ways of warging and old magic. Still no spell to get those joints working again though, but he could become some kind of medieval Professor Xavier and use his mental powers to shape a kingdom to his will, which actually does sound pretty awesome. Number 3. The Wall Comes Down 
If the others are going to make it to the Seven Kingdoms to unleash their brand of icy fury upon the world, they're going to have to make it past the wall first, and that's exactly what this theory states will happen. Not by going over it, but by bringing the wall down, presumably with some sort of ancient magic which will look great on our screens. That allows their army to spill over into Westeros and lay waste to the lands before causing utter devastation. The series will end with the world in ruins, having been completely overwhelmed and destroyed by the White Walkers. I mean, who needs happy endings anyway? Number 2. A Battle of Ice and Fire Ice equal White Walkers, fire equal dragons. Basically, the Song of Ice and Fire is going to come down to the battle of these two great forces. It's perhaps the most widely held theory out there on this list, and from everything we've seen and read so far, it seems the most likely. The White Walkers will eventually make their way into Westeros, causing chaos and destruction, and the realm must unite to stop them. There may not be enough dragon glass or Valerian steel to go around, but when Daenerys has these huge dragons, then it does even the playing field somewhat. Of course, with three dragons, you're going to need three riders, so it posits that there'll be another two riding alongside Danny to save the world. Many believe that Tyrion is a secret Targaryen, while the theory that Mira Reed is also a Targaryen and also Jon's twin has been growing in popularity, so that could be another option. Regardless of the rider, the fate of the world will be settled in one epic dragons versus white walkers battle, with the men fighting the rest of their army down on the ground, and it would look absolutely amazing. Number 1. Jon vs Daenerys Thanks to their status as being the lead characters in the saga, being the attractive hero and heroine, and the theory of Jon being a Targaryen, which at this point is more of a plot point and waiting confirmation than just a theory, the idea that Daenerys and Jon will get together at the end, defeat the others and rule Westeros as one is a very popular theory among fans. There is another theory, however, that the exact opposite is going to happen. This is based around the idea that Daenerys, rather than being the saviour of Westeros, is the biggest threat to it. Like the Mad King before her, she's going to go insane, and along with her dragons will ruin the Seven Kingdoms. Jon then has been brought back to life for like the 15th time in order to combat her. He discovers the Horn of Winter and then commands the army of the White Walkers, wakes the Ice Dragon and then rides him into battle against Daenerys and her three dragons. Jon is ice, Daenerys is fire, I am aroused. And that's our list. Got any more endings for us? <laughs> Get it? Like, got? Like G-O-T, Game of Thrones? Whatever, you people are dullards. Then drop us a comment in the section below. If you no doubt want to correct me as I'm sure I've got something wrong on this list, then you can do so here and here. If you enjoyed the video, then like, share and subscribe. I've been Jules for WhatCulture.com and I'll see you soon.